Welcome to this study video on playing my arrangement of Bart Howard's Flying Me to the Moon, a song that's actually written in 3-4 time. And in my arrangement, I have incorporated a chorus in 3-4. In the original recording I did of this version in C, I didn't extend it through the whole of the um, song, which is basically a repeated section with slightly different endings each time. So it's an eight bar phrase repeated, sorry, 16 bar tune that gets repeated, but the last uh, four bars get changed. Now to follow this decently, you'll need to um, email me for the tabs and I'll put that on the instructions. If you just click the little triangle under the video you'll see all of the descriptions of it and where to get the music from. So this version I've done in C or A minor, it vacillates between the two, um, but it starts in A minor and ends up in C basically. I used to do it in F but this version I find uh, better for singers and also nicer to play. So I'm going to start with a very simple exposition of the f of the main tune, putting a chord every half note. Okay, that takes us to the end of bar 16, the end of the first time through. Let's just see what's happened. Had this A minor into a D minor. My standard way of doing a D minor is to use a double stop, but of course that is quite as good. Sometimes you want that one if you're reaching out to a 5 or a 3, uh, but here you're not actually doing that, so it's fine just to play then into a G7 and on this one I use my little finger to play the G in the next chord then everybody's favourite nice open foot one of my arranging ideas is if I get um, a chord with a melody note involved then I'm going to pluck it like that maybe roll it slightly so that you get the note on the highest string will be the one which is the melody note normally and that will come after the other ones so it actually does stand out a bit more but then as in bar four there isn't another melody note because that E carries on so you can just do a little brush and I just use the back of my first finger to do that in bar 7 I'm going to this version of an E I could have used that one uh, but I just prefer the sound of that now notice what I do I use fingers 1, 2, 4 on that 1, 2, 4 as I'm repeating this G sharp in both places then I'm going to move my second finger back to the F natural then my third finger comes in on that 2 where it was that finger before. Slightly unusual chord, this G diminished in bar 12. Now you've ended up in C to start the tune again it's got to go back to the key of A minor. And to do that, it's going to go through the dominant seventh of the new key, um, which is E7. And here I've done, done these versions of E7, which I can do N7, 
any way of doing a rhythm on those. Maybe if you play them as block chords, then roll that last one, it'd be quite nice. Then at bar 17, the fingering for the left hand is identical, but you're doing a lot more work with the right hand now. You're playing it in quavers, or eighth notes, as the Americans like to call them. So, basic pattern in bar 17. Using my standard Pima position for the right hand thumb, P, Bulgar, I on the in C string, middle finger, M on the E string, and A, annular finger, on the A string. And you're sort of bouncing off those, and every other note's the open C. In bar 18, I decided, because of the dotted note, I wanted to put a, just a little brush stroke after the D minor. And the same again in bar 19. One of those lovely bars that comes up in uh, ukulele playing occasionally, bar 20, where you're just playing open strings. C major chord. Slightly different chords in that A minor bar, um, going to the A7 in bar 24. Now the big change. doing is you're doing this E but again you got that pattern notice when you get into bar 28 if that E has faded away as it probably will have done play it again if you were singing it you'd want that note to be continuous but on the ukulele we've got to make use of what we've got and one is that um, the sustain isn't as long as a voice would be so repeat the note one nice idea which I use a lot bar 30 slide Last note, slide from the 3 to the 5, from the C to the D. Now I'm going to do this uh, neat little trick to get it into 3-4 time for to repeat the chorus. I play triplets, 1, 2, 3. And it's a much more strummed effect. Look at bar. 34 instead of having this and 3, 4 1, 2 and 3 and then you're on to the F to repeat and I want to include that E7 bar. Now we're on to ending two, so you're going up to the seven again. But this time now I want to go back to 4-4, four, four. so what I do is I do four lots of triplets. Sorry. Then Bar 
bar 57. I varied from what happened in bar 20. It's a C, but this time I put the higher C in as well. And of course, one of the joys of being an arranger is that you can change things, um, add more notes, take notes away in the accompaniment. The things that have got to be there are the melody and an implication of the harmony. What you do with the rhythm um, is very much up to the player. And sometimes I'll say, well, do a bar where you're just strumming everything. And in that, you're going to use lots of dampening of strings to stop uh, ones that you don't want to be there. Um, so that's why I've got this license in bar 57, just to add a high G in it. ending. Bar 68 it's a writ so you're going to go slower. Start with finger 4 on the 3 and just use these different bars with these fingers going across and then end with a C major 7th you could E. Okay, so that takes us all the way through. It'd be nice to be playing it with a group of musicians where you can do a solo lead section on top of it. If you've played it with everything, then if obviously you've got a bass player and a drummer, make sure the drummer knows uh, when he's going into 3-4. But it'd make a very nice um, item in a concert. So, enjoy this version of Fly Me to the Moon and look for where to get the notes from when you look at the description under the video itself.